I'm Andy Panko, owner of Tenon Financial. Welcome to Retirement Planning Demystified. I'm sure you're familiar with buying investments like stocks, bonds, or mutual funds with the hope that they'll go up in price so that you can eventually sell them for a gain. But what if you think the price of something is going to decrease instead of increase? Can you somehow take a position so that you'll make money if that occurs? Yes, you can. It's called doing a short sale, and I'm about to explain how it works. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the little thumbs up like button below. Thank you. Before we start, remember this video is only general explanations and education. It's not specific tax, legal, or investment advice. Before considering acting on anything you see in this video, first consult with your tax, legal, or investment advisor. Doing a short sale, otherwise known as taking a short position, is basically the opposite of buying something hoping its price will go up, which is called taking a long position. Instead of buying with the view that the position's price will increase, a short sale is instead selling with the view that the position's price will decrease. Before walking through the mechanics of a short position, let's first revisit how money can be made or lost in doing a traditional long position, which is the type of investing everyone is familiar with. We'll assume you're taking a traditional long position by buying shares of a stock. Let's say the price of that stock is currently $100, and this is where you decide to buy it. Then over time, the stock's price goes up a bit, then down a bit, then up again, and reaches $150. And that's where you decide to sell it. Well, if you bought it for $100 and sold it for $150, you made a $50 gain. Congrats! That's obviously the goal with taking a traditional long position. You want to buy low and sell high. I think we've all heard that saying before. But what if the opposite happens? What if the price of the stock were to go down from where you bought it? Let's take a quick look at that. Again, assume the stock price is $100 when you decide to buy it. Then the price goes up a little, comes down a bit, goes back up, and then goes down such that it's now only $50. And that's the point you decide to cut your losses and sell it. If you paid $100 and sold it for only $50, that means you made a loss of $50. Obviously not cool, but in the absolute worst case, you can't lose more than the amount of your original purchase of $100, because the stock price can't go below zero. So at least your downside is ultimately capped. Let's now walk through the mechanics of shorting a stock or taking a position based on the view that the stock's price will fall. Unlike with taking a long position where you simply buy something you don't already own, a short position is the opposite. You sell something you don't already own and then eventually buy it back. Well, that begs the question, how do you sell something if you don't own it? Well, you borrow it, that's how. Let's walk through an example and then I'll explain more about how the borrowing process works. Let's use the same hypothetical stock as last time. Assume that stock is currently trading at $100 you think its price is going to decline over time and you want to try to make money on that view. You would first borrow shares from a broker and then sell those shares into the market. In doing so, you receive $100 in proceeds from the sale. In other words, you now have $100 in your pocket that you didn't originally have. And then over time, the stock price may go up a bit, then down, then back up, and then finally it goes down a lot such that it's now trading at $50. And that's when you decide to buy the shares back from the market. And once you buy the shares back, you then return them to the broker from where you borrowed them. At this point, your short position is closed out or unwound. The economics of the short sale were such that you received $100 when you first sold the shares and then had to pay $50 to buy the shares back. All said and done, you net yourself a gain of $50 in your short position. Well done. You may have noticed the goal of a short position is the exact opposite of that of a long position. Whereas with a long position, you want to buy low and sell high, in a short position, you instead want to first sell high and then buy low. And that makes sense because you want the price to decline in between. One very important thing to know is that the risk of loss in a short position is substantially higher than the risk of loss in a long position. Recall that you can't lose more than your initial investment in a long position because the worst that can happen is the stock goes to zero and you lose everything. On the other hand, with a short sale, you lose money when the stock goes up, not when it goes down and there's theoretically no limit on how high a stock price can go. With that said, you face a potentially infinite amount of loss in a short sale, so be very careful before trying to do a short sale on something. In practice, most of you probably won't ever attempt to short a stock or any other type of security. First, you'd have to find a broker who'd be willing to let you borrow shares to short. Most brokers have strict suitability requirements around who they'll let engage in borrowing and shorting. And you'll have to post a broker cash or other securities as collateral, again because you have potentially infinite loss on short positions and the broker is going to want to protect themselves. And once you enter a short position, as the position moves against you, you'll have to post more collateral to the broker along the way. It's not like you'd get to simply keep all of the $100 of initial sale proceeds like in the example I gave before. 
most brokers will make you post something more than $100 in collateral for a trade like this because they want you to have some of your own money tied up and at risk. So it's not just their money you're playing with. And if you do actually put a short position on, the broker may force you to close it out at some point if the share keeps going up, or in other words, if your losses keep going up. Because keep in mind, you don't actually own the shares. You simply borrow them from the broker and the broker owns them. There's nothing preventing them from forcing you to give the shares back, which means you'll have to go buy the shares in the market to then deliver back to the broker. As you can see, there are safety mechanisms in place at brokers to help ensure things don't spiral too far out of control for you when you have a short position on. But nonetheless, you can lose a lot of money in doing short sales, especially if there are quick and extreme increases in the price of the security you're shorting. So be real careful when considering putting on a short position. Well, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my monthly newsletter at Retirement Planning Insights, which provides informative retirement planning tips and info. Be sure to join my free Facebook group, Taxes in Retirement, where you can learn all about tax-efficient retirement planning. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.